So today we're going to be considering uh, the LU decomposition of matrices by which we take uh, matrix A and decompose it into a lower triangle matrix L and a upper triangle matrix U such that the product of matrices L times U will result in the original matrix A. Now there are a few ways to uh, perform this decomposition. One of the common ways is using a uh, Gauss elimination with uh, pivoting. However, what we are going to be doing here is we're going to be just uh, doing some straight mathematics by assuming that we have a lower and an upper matrix of the uh, following formats. And uh, in these two matrices, we have elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, and Q. These are all currently unknowns, which we will be solving uh, through this problem, basically going element by element through these matrices. And uh, we're going to solve this for a, a given matrix, matrix A equals... So let's arrange these uh, matrices into the form that we expect to see, LU equals A, and we'll uh, commence solving the unknowns, uh, the unknown letters that we have throughout matrices L and U. And uh, now that we have this set up here, we can basically go through each individual row of matrix L multiplying by each individual column of matrix U, and that should be going to the corresponding numbers in, uh, in our A matrix that was uh, previously defined. And uh, we know that from matrix math, the uh, multiplication of the uh, first row and the first column will produce this first point in the output matrix. First column and, or sorry, first row and second column will produce the second first row, third column will produce the third, and so on, and so on for the uh, individual rows as well. So let's get started here. First we're going to be taking a look at the uh, first row and the first column. So that means that uh, 1 times g equals 3. So therefore, g equals 3. We've solved the uh, first unknown in our upper matrix. As we uh, go along through the upper matrix, we'll note that all these other unknowns here, these are going to be multiplied by zero. So essentially, the top of our upper matrix is just going to be the uh, first row of our A matrix. So therefore, we can uh, similarly state that H equals 7 from our output, I equals 0 from our output, and J equals 5 from our output. Now it's important to note that doing the uh, LU decomposition in this method does not account for the possibility that if we had a 0 right here that uh, we would essentially no longer have a perfect upper matrix. As we go along solving the other rows of this uh, lower and upper matrix we would find that we would have a divide by 0 error at some point. And uh, basically, what we would prefer to do would be to pivot the system such that the largest number occurs on the row that we're working with. So for the first row, we're working with this first set of numbers, we would prefer to pivot this uh, line here to the top, such that we have the largest number to work with on the uh, first element on the first row of this uh, A matrix and uh, we would continue pivoting and so on and so forth. So say for example this uh, ends up with the second largest uh, number or the largest second number. We would uh, pivot that up into here. Uh, but essentially uh, we're not going to be doing that in this example but we will do that in the uh, next video where we'll be looking at the uh, Gauss elimination method with pivoting. Now that we've solved the uh, top row of our upper matrix, let's uh, start with the second row here. That's going to be A times 1, 0, 0. That's going to be times G. So therefore, A times G plus 1 times 0, because uh, there's just a 0 here. 
Uh, that's going to be equal to, this is in our second row in our first column, therefore it's going to be equal to 6. And uh, therefore to solve for the unknown a, a equals, uh, it's going to be 0, it's just going to be 6 divided by g. Our g is 3, so therefore a equals 2. As I was saying earlier about pivoting the matrix uh, to get the largest number on the first row there, uh, say for example if that 3 had actually been a 0, then we would not be able to solve for unknown A without pivoting the matrix. So uh, matrix pivoting is essential. This is just a, a very quick method. Uh, this matrix is already arranged in a way that it can be easily decomposed into the lower and upper matrices. So I'm just going to continue along similarly for this, uh, for this row column multiplication here. And uh, just for ease of viewing, I'm going to separate these out. So this is the first row. This is all multiplication on the second row. Now for the third row, we're looking at uh, BC10, and uh, we're looking at, again, the verticals here. And uh, this is our row that we're considering on our A matrix. So. Finally, we have the last row here, DEF, and uh, known Q, and this uh, final row here in the output A matrix. And uh, therefore, we have all the unknowns in the lower and upper matrices. Uh, we can rewrite those here. Uh, simply note that basically what we have here is uh, proof positive that assuming the matrix is well conditioned in its current form, uh, we can simply take all of these values. We can back substitute to get the values of uh, D, J, E, M, F, P, Q, all of those and uh, basically get a single expression for each position in these two matrices such that we only have to apply a single formula for each location and uh, we would get the output value for the lower and upper matrix. But uh, let's write these out as uh, full matrices here. And there we have the lower and upper matrices for uh, representing matrix A as we had before. Uh, interestingly enough, if we want to compute the determinant, uh, since this uh, since this diagonal is all ones, we would just multiply the diagonals of matrix U all together to get the determinant. So uh, the determinant of matrix A is equal to the determinant of matrix L times matrix U. Given that LU uh, multiplied together, the matrices LU will produce matrix A. We can uh, simply de note that uh, the determinant of matrix L is 1. The determinant of matrix U is the multiplication of this diagonal, uh, which equals determinant L times determinant U. And uh, therefore, given the uh, these are both triangle matrices, the determinant of the matrix L is easy to find out. It's just that uh, just that diagonal there. Those are all ones. 
for the upper matrix it's a little bit more difficult but you uh, multiply the main diagonal and you will get uh, 1350 and that's a uh, quick and easy way to get the determinant uh, in addition to that we can also uh, can also invert the matrix based on these uh, lower and upper matrices and uh, if we uh, had a matrix representing a system of linear equations we could uh, also solve the system of linear equations using this method uh, but basically uh, this is how you would uh, decompose uh, lower and upper matrices from a uh, given matrix A uh, this doesn't use any pivoting at all, so if matrix A is not uh, formatted in a specific way or if we have a zero in the wrong place, then this method will fail. However, in the next video that I'm uploading, I will be uh, taking a look at using a Gauss elimination method to compute the lower and upper matrices with pivoting, which uh, should help to avoid any issues with uh, zero being in the wrong place. So stay tuned, I'm Arlington Matrix, and uh, we'll be back.